Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Austray's uh, session of the next uh, round of the um, Export Market Development Grants Program. This session will focus on the T1, uh, which is the T for businesses that are ready to export and ready to apply in EMDG. I'm Nerma Gunich. I look after the EMDG program at Austrade uh, from the delivery perspective. And today with me, um, uh, there is uh, two presenters or uh, people who are supporting me in delivering this webinar. Tracy Butcher is my colleague based in Melbourne. She is the manager of EMDG policy team. Hello, Tracy. And Chunga Lee and my uh, colleague here in Sydney, who is our senior legal advisor. Before we begin, we'd like to respectfully acknowledge uh, the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we gather today. We extend its respect to their elders, past and present. We recognize the enduring connection that the Aboriginal and Torres, Torres Strait Islander people have with this land. And we extend our respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging their rich histories, cultures and contributions. We're coming to you from the Gadigal land here in Sydney of the Aura Nation and Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation in Melbourne. Just at the outset, we'd like to uh, just remind you of some housekeeping. Um, so this session will be recorded. We already started recording it. Um, your microphone is probably already muted and uh, you don't need to turn on your camera if you are not presenting. Um, also, we will be using Slido for questions and answers later on in the session. You're welcome to post those questions in Slido from now on. Uh, the hashtag is EMDG. So as I said, the purpose of today's information session is to focus on the T1 uh, applicants uh, in the next round of the program. We'll start with a very brief overview of what is EMDG. Then we'll move on uh, to talk about the changes to the program as a result of the strategic refocus of the program recently. And then we'll go through details of the next round, including eligibility conditions for the T1 applicants. Then we'll spend some time going through a step-by-step -step process, how to prepare to apply, and what do you need to have ready when we open to applications later in November. We'll, we'll then have some time for questions and answers through Slido with the hashtag EMDG. So what is EMDG? You probably do know that this program has been around for, for so many years. Next year, we'll, we'll celebrate 50 years of EMDG. It's very simple. The program is a grant program for Australian businesses to start and grow their exports. Grants can be provided to small and medium enterprises and their representative bodies to help them undertake export marketing and promotional activities or export training. Applicants must match the grant funding and they also must meet, uh, must meet all eligibility conditions to receive the grant. We have four T's in the program, and again, this session will focus on the T1 for applicants who are ready to export and ready to apply in EMDG. Other T's are T2 for exporters that are established exporters and uh, are wishing to expand their exporting within the existing export markets. T3 is for exporters that are wishing to diversify into new key markets and specific representative body T for uh, industry big bodies or representative bodies uh, who wish to support their SME members to become export ready, grow export activities, gain marketing skills and also support their diversification into new export markets. So I would like to hand over to Tracy now to take you through the changes to the program and eligibility conditions. Thank you, Nama. So for this round, round four, changes have been made to EMDG. It's important to make sure you're aware of the changes before you apply, particularly if you're already familiar with this program. The changes to EMDG have been made to address some challenges that we've had, and in particular, amendments made as part of the 2020 reforms, which created much higher demand and delivered lower grant amounts. For rounds one, two, and three, which were our most recent rounds of the program, we have offered much smaller grant amounts. And this is because of high demand and the need to allocate all eligible applicants a grant across multiple grant years. And we heard from stakeholders that was a really high concern. Because of lessened eligibility criteria, we've seen a much higher volume of very, very small businesses. 
and the analysis that we have indicates these small businesses are, are not necessarily going on to achieve export success. Among those businesses, there's also been a very high proportion of underspends, which may indicate that there were some businesses not quite ready to apply. An operational review that was undertaken in 2022 found that there was a need to better manage the program um, in line with the available funding that we have. And the budget is reducing to 110 million in 2020, 2025, 20, 26. This is still a very substantial investment by the government in this program, but we need to be able to work the program at any budget. The changes that we have made to EMDG have been informed by stakeholder feedback, including public consultation processes. This includes an operational review of the program in 2022, a further public consultation process in 2023, which sought feedback about a range of options for the program, then targeted consultations about the rules and aspects of the guidelines in 2024. This feedback, along with data and analysis, has informed the changes. The changes we have made aim to maximise benefits to businesses and provide higher grant amounts. A key change we're making, which is in line with other government programs, includes that applications for EMDG will close once available funding is fully allocated. This is different to how we currently do it, where um, we currently allocate a proportion of funding to all eligible applicants. And this means that grants can be very low in a given round because we simply cannot know how many applications we might receive. By making the changes, we will be able to offer larger grant amounts for those that are eligible. And we can also let potential applicants know the maximum grant amounts that can be applied for. And hopefully this will provide clarity to help you better prepare your marketing and promotional activities before you apply. There are now new eligibility criteria for small and medium businesses. And this criteria um, better aligns to businesses that may be able to utilise the funds. Changes mean that we're also going to be encouraging some applicants to diversify into new key markets which have been identified for the program. This relates to our Tier 3 applicants only. We're also making changes for representative bodies, including seeking more deliberate planning and transparency about how EMDG is being utilised. And we're introducing a few new compliance measures. So applicants need to be fit to receive a grant, including meeting their tax obligations. These changes will apply from the next round, which is round four. Round four will cover a two year period. So you may be able to apply for grant agreements for up to two years, depending on your eligibility. The approach provides certainty for successful applicants and reduces their need to apply each year. The round is for marketing and promotional activities planned for the 2025-26 and 2026-27 financial years. And the program funding that we have for EMDG for those financial years will be fully allocated as a result of the application process that will open in November. Applications for representative bodies will open first on the 6th of November. Then separate to this, applications for businesses applying for tiers 1, 2 and 3 will then open on the 12th of November. And we recommend that you take steps to prepare ahead of the opening date if you're planning to apply. We will be opening applications until the funding is fully allocated to each of the tiers and we'll be assessing the applications in the order in which they're received. Once the application period is open, we will regularly communicate the status of the applications for the tiers. This will be done on the Austrade website and the online portal where you submit applications. This is very different from the previous grant rounds, but it is an important way in which we're going to be able to set maximum grant amounts at meaningful levels for successful applicants. You can apply for one of four tiers, as Nurma has outlined. 
you can only apply for one tier in the grant round. So you need to be careful about the, the tier that you choose um, and consider things like where you're at in terms of your export journey and what your plans are for export going forward. This session is going to be focused on tier one, which is for businesses who have not exported before. But please carefully consider which tier is right for you. If you apply for the wrong tier, you may be ineligible for EMDG. So for this round, maximum grant amounts will range from $30,000 to $80,000 for the different tiers. The maximum grant amount for tier one will be up to $30,000 per financial year. Tier two, up to $50,000. Tier three, up to $80,000. And for representative bodies, up to $50,000 per financial year. This provides some certainty for the first time about how much you may receive if you're successful. The minimum grant amount available under the program for tiers one, two, and three is $20,000 per financial year. And there's no minimum grant amount for representative bodies, but everybody needs to be able to match the grant funds. We anticipate that we will offer around 1,900 grants in total for this round. So now we're gonna focus on the eligibility conditions that are specific for our tier one applicants. And the full details of the eligibility conditions are in the guidelines and the rules, and you can find those on the EMDG website. So tier one is for businesses that have not exported before, but that are ready to export and that have eligible products and services that are ready to go. If this doesn't sound like you, another tier may be better for you. There are other webinars for tier two and tier three tomorrow, or you can watch these webinars online when they're available. For round four, tier one applicants can apply for grants from $20,000 up to $30,000 per financial year. And we anticipate offering around 500 tier one grants. Applications for Tier 1 will open on the 12th of November. So to be eligible for Tier 1, you must be export ready before you apply and have successfully completed either an export training course that's recognised by Austrade or the Austrade Export Readiness Test. The export readiness test is new and is free to complete to help businesses assess if they're export ready before they apply. The test is short. It takes around 30 minutes to do the 10 modules and you need to log into the EMDG online portal to do the test. Informa information about the export training and the Austrade export readiness test is on the Go Global Toolkit website. And you must provide evidence that you've completed at least one of these requirements. If you complete the Austrade Export Readiness Test, the online application form will reflect that. To show you've completed export training, you can provide a certificate, an email or badge provided by the provider confirming completion of the training. The training or the test needs to be completed by a suitable company representative, which could include CEO, a CFO, a director, or an authorised manager, and a grant agent cannot complete the export readiness requirements on your behalf. You must be an Australian person, so this could include that you're an individual whose principal place of residence is in Australia, a company established under Australian law or a partnership or trust where more than 50% of partners are Australian persons. You must hold a valid ABN when you apply and after you've entered into a grant agreement. And we verify this at the assessment stage and before we make any payments. You must have conducted business under that ABN for a minimum of two years at the time you apply for the grant. So the two year period is based on the date of application. Your annual turnover must be more than $100,000 
and less than 20 million in the year prior to the application being made. So for round four, this will be for the financial year 2023-24. Annual turnover is the total sales by business over the year and relates to your trading income. And a profit and loss statement for the 2023-24 financial year will need to be provided to confirm your turnover. You need to have a high quality plan to market and the need for the plan is a really important component of the program. And the plan should tell us what you plan to do in terms of your marketing and promotional activities. The plan must be high quality and unique to your business. And to be considered high quality, all the mandatory questions need to be completed with sufficient detail. The questions in the plan to market have been incorporated into the application form. And we'll explain that a little bit more in the presentation later. You must be able to spend at least $20,000 per financial year of your own money to market and promote your products internationally. This does not include the grant amount you're applying for. When you apply, you must demonstrate that you've got the capacity to spend at least $20,000 by providing bank statements. So with the match funding from the grant, this means you need to be planning to undertake at least $40,000 in eligible expenditure per financial year on eligible activities. You can, of course, plan to spend more on proposed activities, which may be funded up to the maximum grant amount for EMDG. And you need to provide realistic estimates of your planned expenditure in your plan to market. You must match the dollar value of the grant with your own funds. Your total eligible expenditure must be at least double the grant amount you are seeking. So for example, if you're awarded a grant agreement of $30,000 per financial year, your total eligible expenditure on marketing and promotional activities need to be $60,000. The amount in your grant agreement is the maximum you will receive if you spend more you will not receive more grant money. And if you spend less, providing it's more than $20,000, you'll receive an amount equal to the amount you contributed. And in the application form, you'll need to declare that you can match the grant amount. You must be fit to receive the grant. This means you must comply with all your obligations under taxation laws. And also you don't have any outstanding disqualifying convictions. You're not under insolvency administration, nor are you conducting your business in an unprofessional or unethical manner. In total, you can receive up to eight financial years of EMDG support since July 1990. The eight financial years doesn't have to be consecutive, and this has not changed in the program. However, what has changed is that we've introduced yearly limits for how long you can receive each of the tiers. So within those eight years, the new yearly limits are up to two years for tier one, up to four years for tier two, and up to four years for tier three. If you've received EMDG previously, you must check your grant history before you apply to work out your yearly limits. And the application form for round four will automatically populate a table of prior grant years. Also from round four, the way we calculate a grant year towards the eight yearly limit has changed. So for round four grantees, calculation towards eight years will be based on the number of years within the grant agreement. And if you've had a grant previously, the number of grants you've previously been paid in the program. For round four and beyond, grant years will be based on entering into a grant agreement. And every period in a grant agreement will count towards the total number of years, even if you don't have any activity in that, in one of those years. And I'll now pass back to Nirma to discuss eligible products. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. 
Hello everyone again. So um, as we heard from Tracy, we have to meet all eligibility conditions to apply in EMDG. And that includes being an eligible person, having eligible products, and also planning to have eligible expenses and also then incurring them later as part of your grant agreement. So eligible products. Um, to be eligible, the products are defined in the EMDG rules and in the grant guidelines. They must be of a substantial Australian origin. And in round four, we have tightened that criteria in the rules. So if you have goods that are made outside of Australia, you must uh, demonstrate that they meet four criteria under Rule 19D. That means that uh, the goods that are made outside of Australia uh, meet all four criteria, no longer three, but all four. So the assets used to make the goods are ready for sale. The activities are resulting in the goods being made ready for sale. Um, and are mainly of substantially uh, carried uh, in Australia. And a significant proportion of the value of the goods is, ed is added in Australia. And the making of the product is also directly generating employment in Australia. So you need to meet all of those four if you're applying for goods made outside Australia. Obviously, eligible products are defined in the rules and in the guidelines under Section uh, 5.2. So please have a look uh, for detailed descriptions of all of those that you're currently seeing on the screen. As I said, goods, intellectual property or know-how is an eligible product. Events, services, uh, also services other than tourism are eligible and software. So all of those have specific requirements and details outlined in the guidelines. So... Um, for example, if, if you apply for, invent, for an event that is held uh, in Australia or if the event is online, it must be provided by an Australian person. Uh, for IP, for example, an eligible product includes an IP or know-how, which must also satisfy all relevant substantial Australian origin requirements under the EMDG rules. An eligible product can also include software, which must be... Um, a kind of a work that you have copyright for or uh, must result in a wholly or substantially of work done in Australia. So again, Australian origin is very important across all of those eligible products. Eligible expenses, again, very important for you to read the guidelines to understand what is eligible and what is not eligible as you are preparing your applications to apply in November. So you will need to, first and foremost, we will need to show that your expenses actually are relating to eligible export promotion activities, uh, or if you wish to uh, obtain some training activities as a T1 applicant, they can also be eligible under EMDG. Again, Section 5.3 of the grant guidelines outlines all those um, eligible expenses or categories uh, under EMDG that are eligible. So you're seeing them now on the screen. Um, I'll go through, through them now briefly, but again, please read the guidelines to look into the detail. So if you wish to maintain a representative in a foreign country, costs associated for doing so are eligible. Short trips within Australia or short trips to a foreign country are also eligible. Having a consultant to help you with export promotion is also an eligible expense. Similarly, foreign fire visits Soliciting in a foreign country for business in a foreign country, meaning you attending trade shows, that can also be eligible. If you would like to send free samples overseas, that can also be an eligible cost. Promotional and advertising material, IP rights, fees around that, and training activities again for uh, T1 applicants. We have tightened some of the conditions under the eligible expenses uh, for, uh, that will apply from round four. So if you are uh, traveling and uh, want to claim short trips within Australia or uh, internationally, you can only claim up to the economy airfare uh, cost. So you're welcome to obviously uh, uh, travel business class, but you need to pay that difference yourself. When you come to submit your master report, you can show us the equivalent of the economy uh, airfare costs. Um, in the old grant agreement, we will outline the evidence that you will need to provide with your master report to substantiate those costs as well. Also, there is a limit to free samples. Up to 15,000 can be recognised by EMDG as, as eligible costs for EMDG purposes. If you incur more, you need to pay uh, yourself. Obviously, um, 
we can also look at ineligible expenses to just warn you what is not eligible under EMBG as you are preparing uh, for your applications. So obviously expenses recovered by um, other financial assistance uh, programs or grant programs are not eligible. So you, we cannot allow you to double dip. Uh, sales or, um, uh, or export of a product that contravenes Australian law, that is uh, not eligible. Expenses to solicit sponsorship for an event, that is not eligible. Capital expenses are not eligible. Trade with expenses related to trade with New Zealand, not eligible, or with trade with any sanctioned countries that Australia does not uh, allow trade with, or any sanctioned products that are um, uh, as well listed as sanctioned products for trade purposes. Any paid expenses, and that means if you, for example, are attending a trade show and a third party has already paid fees uh, for, your, for your attendance, you cannot claim that cost under EMBG given that it's already been paid. Government costs such as tax or levy, you cannot claim that under EMDG. Um, remuneration costs or salaries um, are not eligible. Obviously, any illegal activities are not eligible or expenses or products that might have detrimental impact on Australia, uh, uh, rep Australia's reputation. Also, I just wanted to note that grant writing expenses are not eligible under EMDG. Please do not confuse them with consultancy uh, costs that might be eligible uh, that you saw on the previous slide. So if you're engaging a grant agent to assist you with applying, that cost is not eligible in EMDG. So again, please look at the guidelines as you are preparing your budgets and expenses to apply for EMDG. The next session, uh, we'll talk more about uh, how to prepare your T1 application. There are eight very simple steps that we are outlining on this slide for you to follow. And all of this information is obviously on our website for you to have a look at and prepare uh, your applications. So the first step that I would like to urge you to do is to read the EMDG grant guidelines. Please ensure that you to, to read the guidelines for round four of the program that apply for 25, 26, and 26, 27 financial years. You can find them on our website. What is important as well, we can only apply for one T, as Tracy outlined. So if this is obviously a webinar for T1. So please do not um, think that you can apply across many Ts. There's one application per one ABM. The next very important step for you is to set up your digital identity if you don't, don't already have that one. We use MyGovID, obviously, in Australia for many um, uh, services that you can access, uh, uh, government services that you can access using MyGovID, and EMDG is one of them. So please set up your digital identity. There are instructions on the ATO website how to do so, and um, we cannot help you with that. So Austria does not man manage a, uh, MyGovID or any technical support is not provided by us, please contact ATO to do so. But you must have your digital identity. It does take a while to set it up, so please uh, do so as soon as possible so you can be ready to apply uh, later in November. Once you set up your MyGov ID, please link it with uh, the Relationship Authorization Manager. That's the name of the app. Basically linking your business ABN with, um, with your digital identity through that RAM application. Once you do that, please then test uh, the login uh, in, into the My um, into the EMDG online portal using your MyGovID credentials, just to test whether that works for you. And if not, please contact ATO to help you with that. Another uh, item that you must consider and have ready before you apply is your NC code. So you, that's your unique uh, industry uh, code for your business or so the primary kind of. Uh, business classification that you use for your business, please have it handy because you will be asked to key that in uh, into the online form. In addition to guidelines that are available on our website and uh, streams of videos to, to help you how to apply, uh, we have developed a sample application form for each tier. So there is one for T1 that outlines all questions that you will be um, answering in the online form. So we recommend that you look at that sample application form now, start preparing answers, even writing them up in a Word document so you can then later copy and paste them into the online form. 
there's also an exemplar T1 uh, application form for you to uh, uh, exemplar plan to market that you can use, and I will talk about it next. Um, so high quality plan to market is a, a key uh, key component of your application process in EMDG. In the past, if you applied before in EMDG in the current rounds, so that could have been a, a simple plan to market or simple business plan that you used just to plan what you will do. However, from round four, we're asking you to actually consider and answer all questions satisfactorily. Uh, think about your strategy <laughs> and specific uh, marketing activities that you intend to do in those markets that you would like to target. Think about um, the goals that you would like to achieve. How will you measure success? And um, you know, answer all questions that you need in that in that uh, plan to market, including your budget. So your planned expenditure for 25, 26, and 26, uh, 26, 27 must be included in your plan to market. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, it's a high quality plan to market, so make sure that you spend time preparing it because if we find issues with it when uh, assessing it later, if there's incomplete uh, questions or uh, insufficient information, we won't be coming back to clarify that with you because there won't be uh, time for us to do so and your applications are maybe uh, deemed ineligible based on that. Depending on uh, what type of eligible product you're applying to promote, uh, you may need to attach a couple of other documents as well with the application form, such as uh, if you're promoting services other than tourism, there is a specific template with questions that you need to complete and upload with your online application form. Same with goods made outside Australia, there is a specific template for you to address, complete and upload. And a couple of declarations that you need to make uh, as you commence completing your application, you will need to read them and then make a simple declaration in the, in the online form for that. So the guidelines outline all evident, evidentiary requirements and documents that you need to be ready. Most of those you already have as a, as a normal course of running your business. Uh, but important for T1 uh, applicants to remember is the export readiness component. So Tracy has outlined those requirements earlier. And just to recap, you must demonstrate that you are export ready. So you have never exported before. You now wish to start uh, doing so. And you must show to Austria that you are export ready by either completing our free online uh, module that is available now in the EMDG online portal. So set up your MyGoAD, go in and complete it. Or you can choose from a list of recognized training courses that are published on the Go Global Toolkit pages. Uh, that are recognized by Austrian as export readiness training providers or courses that you can do between now and November. <coughs> and um, they will be recognized as export readiness uh, training courses that you have provided. When you complete your export readiness test in the EMDG online portal, we'll remember your credentials. And uh, if you apply late in November, the system will recognize that for you. So you don't need to upload anything. Tracy outlined that a turnover you have must meet 100,000 uh, minimum turnover requirements for T1. You must be two years in the business. So we'll look at uh, to see your profit and loss and balance sheets statements uh, to corroborate that. Capacity to spend is a new requirement. So at least 20,000 uh, in your bank um, must be available to use for EMDG purposes. And you need to demonstrate that to us. Please submit your bank statement with your application for us to see that. You must be tax compliant. And you must also show that evidence with the application form. And here, listed on the screen, you see what type of evidence you'd like to see. That is your business activity statement or your notice of assessment or your statement of account for that financial, for the latest financial year preceding the, the application year. For SMEs that operate as a trust, you must submit your trust deed, including any amendments to the trust deed. And obviously, I mentioned goods made outside Australia is another requirement. There's a template for you to complete and upload with your application. And just to recap, the applications will open on the 12th of November at 10 a.m. for T1 and other T applicants, business applicants. So please use this time between now and um, November to prepare your applications because we do expect that the demand will be high and we'll be assessing applications in the order they received. 
we may allocate funding even before we come to your application, so you may miss out. Um, the portal will close to each day as we allocate that funding. So that is the major change from round four, uh, and you need to be mindful of it. So please prepare and be ready to upload your application as soon as the portal opens, because the funding is limited and you may miss out. We will allow for some buffer or allowance for ineligible applications, or if we offer someone a grant agreement and they, they do not accept it within the time frame, that that funding may be available to be allocated to the next eligible applicant in that tier. But obviously that's a buffer and nothing is guaranteed in that space. Also to reiterate, we will not accept incomplete applications and we will not accept late applications. So that is important to remember too. Right, and just before we open for questions, uh, there is more information just in addition to EMDG that Austria provides for businesses and exporters. Uh, if you visit uh, business.gov.au uh, slash go global toolkit, you will find a wealth of resources there for exporters, into, including uh, free exporting advice, advice on tariffs, yeah, and information about exporting, any planning resources, market research reports, et cetera, to help you understand uh, the export markets out there, you select the markets that you would like to promote to, and also connect you with any export leads and real opportunities. So please uh, use the Global Global Toolkit as you are preparing your uh, strategic high quality plan to market. The information that we outlined today in this webinar is included in the grant guidelines and on our website under austria.gov.au slash forward, uh, forward slash EMDG. You can also ask questions uh, through the EMDG help desk through uh, emdg.help at austria.gov.au. You can also call us on 13 20 78 and also subscribe to the EMDG update newsletter. We do provide regular updates to our current grantees, but also for people who, under, who would like to up, uh, apply in the, next pro, in the next round of the program. So let's go to questions. I have noticed a few questions coming um, to a slider. So let's, let's see, let's start with them. Um, I can take a few, my colleague Tracy and possibly Chung as well will take some questions. We'll endeavor to answer them all in this session. Uh, but if not, um, again, you can call us or send us an email through EMDG Help Desk and we'll try to answer it as soon as possible. Some of your questions might already be answered in the grant guidelines, so please read them as well. Okay, I'll take the first question. It says, is there a list of export training courses recognised by Austrade? Yes, there, there is a good list on the Glow Global Toolkit uh, web pages. Those courses are recognized by Austrade, and you can go and have a look uh, at them now and start um, attending those courses to, to complete your export readiness training. Okay. Can I apply for a grant in round four, I guess, if I didn't apply for grant one, two, three? Um, I guess in principle, yes. Uh, Obviously, we, you need to meet all eligibility criteria. Think about which D is um, uh, kind of suited for your exporting journey. Um, and we will need to look at that once you apply to see whether you're eligible. So we're not excluding you if you haven't applied before. But just remember, are you an exporter? Have you exported before or not? Or are you ready to export to apply in T1? Uh, okay. Do these changes apply to current grantees, that these grantees who already have a grant? So the round four changes apply for round four applicants. So from round four on, onwards, the current grantees that are in the program, the, uh, the previous rules apply to them. So we won't be retrospectively applying those rules to those applicants or grant, current grantees. What is the grand total budget? I, I assume it's it's a it's a question about the the funding appropriation for EMDG for round four. So that is in twenty five twenty six and twenty six twenty seven. In each year, we have what uh, up to one hundred and four point five million to disperse for grants. So we will allocate the, that funding across those two years in the grant agreements for round four. And once we allocate. Uh, 
that will be done. So we won't be opening a new round in 25-26. So the next round will be two years later, just to remind you of that too. Okay, hello, Austrade. Is the turnover annually or monthly? The turnover is annually. So if you're applying in November, uh, your turnover in 23-24 must be at least 100,000 for T1. Okay. Can a copy of the test questions prior to attempting to confirm we have planned for the questions? Mm. So I assume this is re this relates to the export readiness test? Uh, no, that would defeat the purpose of the test if we gave you questions in advance. Um, the export readiness test includes 10 simple modules that you need to go through, and then at the end of that, you complete the test. So that is genuinely an enhanced export readiness test to prepare you to understand uh, what it means to become export ready and be export ready, and then at the end of that, you will be tested and receive a certificate and recognition that you've then, uh, completed that. Our system will recognize that and will remember that code. And when you come to apply late in November, we'll see that you have completed that. So, no, we cannot share the questions in advance. Apologies for that. All right. Okay. Uh, there is a technical question around, I received a grant in round three, but may not have got to exporting by November 12th. Would I still be able to apply for T1 in round four? So if you received a, a grant in round three, no, you can no longer apply in T1 if you already had uh, T1 grants given that uh, the rules from round four apply that you can only receive T1 once. Yeah, for two, up to two years. So no, but obviously we can look at, if you want a more detailed uh, answer on that, please contact us at emdg.help and we'll come back to you. Okay. Okay, the grant period is from 1st of July 25. Does this mean that um, there is the expenses in 24, 25 are not eligible? That is correct. So this grant round, round four, is for expenses that you incur in 25, 26, 26, 27. We won't be recognizing expenses retrospectively for 24, 25. Um, oh, a GST question. There's a GST question. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so GST does not apply to MDG. Yes. Um, okay. Why are representative bodies opening first? So representative body T is a smaller cohort of applicants uh, and the grantees in the current grants as well. We've got about 130 in total across the three rounds. We're starting the them first uh, for various reasons, just to start our system, uh, the demand on the system as well to test it. If, if anything goes wrong, it gives us um, uh, time to adjust operationally before we open um, the, the to other T's later uh, the next week after that. Um, also, they're, they're going first, but they don't have any advantages over other applicants. We treat all applicants the same. So they will have their own tier, obviously, and the funding allocated to that tier. And once we allocate the funding in that tier, we will close to, the, to them. So we won't be moving applicants across the tiers, if, if that's your question. Uh, everyone will have their designated tier and designated funding to be allocated to them in that tier. Okay, there is a question about statement of text record. Uh, we are not asking you for statement of text record. There's other uh, uh, pieces of evidence that you can provide that we have outlined on in the previous slides, that is business activity statement, notice of assessment, but not statement of text record. That is not required for EMDG. Okay. Tracy, would you like to take any questions? I think I answered the most. Happy to take any ones that you um, 
don't. I mean, we've got a couple of questions here about turnover. Yes. Um, and meeting the turnover requirements. So it's probably just useful to reiterate that there are now turnover requirements for tiers one, two, and three. For tier two, tier one applicants, you need to have an annual turnover of at least a hundred thousand dollars. For tier two, that's five hundred thousand dollars, and for tier three, it's a million dollars. So in order to be eligible for those tiers, you need to have those turnover requirements. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. Um, can companies that just apply for one year, for example, 2526, which would be the eighth year of EMDG? Yes, you can do that. So if you only got uh, one year left under your eight year uh, limit, yes, you can apply just for one year. There is a question about case sensitive code from a RAM uh, or relationship authorization manager to link to your ABN. That is a very technical ATO related question. So please, if you could please check that with ATO. Will there be um, upfront grant payments after applications have been approved? If so, how much and roughly when? All right, that's a very good question. So after you submit your application, we will take some time to assess. You will hear from us. If you are not eligible, you will receive an email from us advising you of the outcome of the assessment. If you are eligible and successful to be offered a grant, you will hear from us probably sometime in late January or so. So you won't be offering your grant agreements over the summer period because that wouldn't be fair. Um, so if you're eligible and successful, we'll let you know and offer your grant agreement in early 25, then you will have up to 21 days to accept that offer in the EMDG online portal. That means you accept the offer and then Austrad co-signs it and you have an executed or approved grant agreement. The grant agreement will outline your maximum grant amount for your tier. And then from 1st of July 25, we'll start making those payments. Payments will be made based on risk assessments of, of clients as well and, and grantees. So we may start paying you initial partial payment from July, which could be at least $20,000, which is the minimum grant amount. And then later during the year, as you incur expenses and you are ready to submit your master report and everything is in order, we will pay you the second installment of that grant for that year. So that is, that is the kind of the cadence of things that you can expect to happen if you are successful in the next round. We've got a question on the back here, Nomo, which might be one for Chul. Um, does our company is part of a group? Will each business get eight grants or is it eight for the entire group? Mm -hmm. I saw that question too. Um, I wondered if um, that was more like a question you mentioned to the... Um, aggregated uh, grant history uh, that an applicant can apply. Um, as Noma pointed out um, at the beginning that, um, you know, uh, if the applicant is eligible to apply if the applicant has an ABN. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, the grant history will attach to the specific ABN that you need to the business. However, um, there's also eligibility rule um, under the EMDG Act and the EMDG rules where um, the grant history will be calculated also take by taking into account if uh, there is a previous business or a business uh, at the moment uh, which is conducting similar you know, business uh, you know, as yours. Of course, it's not actually just any business, but the business actually that considering the nature and the operation of the, S, um, the nature of the assets and also the, the people who control the business as well. Not just any of your competitors, but you know, they must be group mm -hmm. uh, controlled business altogether. And then if any like within the group, um, if there's one product that has that has been dealt actually between different members of the group in different format, in, for example, once you know as, um, promoting the intellectual property of it, and the other actually is trading an entity trading the actual product, mm -hmm. and one entity you know provide the after sale services, you know all together, uh, these kind of things that would be considered um, you know under this uh, grouping 
uh, history, uh, you know, a provision mm -hmm. that uh, we would aggregate the uh, uh, the total the number history. of brands altogether. Yeah. So this one yes. uh, history will be attached to this promotion of this one particular product. Mm -hmm. Although it's been dealt with uh, between different group members. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Yeah, that's good. We've got a few questions about the export readiness tool as well. So just to confirm that only T1 applicants are required to complete the export readiness test. Um, we estimate it should take you about 30 minutes to undertake that test. And there's also a question here about if you if, if somebody in your business already has, you know, export skills or experience, would their experience be recognised? Um, and so, no, we, we do expect that your, your undertaking training or the export readiness test that's available to be completed. Thank you, Tracy. There's also a question about the uh, turnover eligibility requirements. So if someone does not meet the half a million turnover that T2 requires, can they apply? Simple answer is no. You must at least have um, half a million in turnover to apply in T2. Um, if my application is unsuccessful, what support resources does Austria offer to help me prepare for the next round of applications? So, um, Bio Global Toolkit is, a, is an excellent resource for you to have a look uh, in terms of thinking about the export, uh, exporting um, and uh, understanding the markets that you wish to promote to, um, as well as um, a kind of step-by-step -step guide how to think about your strategy and your um, export plan. Um, in, in your, we will need probably to hear from you and uh, connect you with our trade uh, start uh, advisors or our trade colleagues here too for any other in-market support services. Um, so yes, so definitely Global Toolkit or you can also access some other uh, programs or services that are delivered in your state or territory. Is there an then, example of completed plan to market? Yes, there is for each tier and it's published on the website. Sorry, Tracy, you go. I was just going to say we've got a couple of questions down the bottom about expected um, turnover. So if your revenue will exceed $100,000 in 2024, 25 year, can we apply? And if revenue for June 24 is not $100,000, but will be over $100,000 to June 2025, can we still apply? So the, the annual business turnover needs to be at the time of application or, or in, the, in the year before. So it's, um, it's not anticipated annual turnover, it's current annual turnover. I think the NDG rules talks about the turnover rules would apply um, by the applicant in terms of, you know, in the year where the applications may mm -hmm. proceed, uh, sorry, you know, in the year proceeding to the applications being made. Yes. So that's the 2324 turnover that mm -hmm. we would like to see. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Someone is asking whether they would like to terminate their current grant agreement so they can apply right for. Unilaterally terminating grant agreement is your prerogative. If you would like to say, no, thank you, we don't need this grant agreement anymore. But that does not guarantee that you will be successful in round four. So that's that's your own risk that you may want to undertake. Okay. I haven't received any grants before. Can I still apply for the new grant? In principle, yes. Um, if you're new to export, T1 may be for you. Um, or if you are an established exporter, you can still apply in higher T's, meeting you need to meet all eligibility requirements as well. So um, EMDG provides up to eight years. So if you haven't applied before, you want to start now, um, this program may be for you. But please um, read the guidelines and understand the requirements for each T. And we have a question here about can you use a consultancy giving exporting advice if one of their services are also grant writers? We are not applying for their grant services, but for their consultancy services. 
So I think that meets the definition of consultancy, but you can't utilise the grant to pay for grant application services. Correct. That is right. Also, if um, your consultant is providing export training, that training must be recognised by Austray. So that won't count as export readiness training. As the courses that we have listed are those that are recognised that you must complete if you wish to do so to be recognised export ready course for the purposes of VMVG. Okay, I think I did answer the question about applying just in one year, if you only got one year left, absolutely you can. Okay. In terms of what counts an export uh, as export, you will need to provide evidence of export sales in the in the at least eighteen months preceding uh, your application in November. So we will need to see evidence of your export sales that you are exporting. Also, the level of your exporting export earnings needs to be commensurate with the with the size of your business. So we will look into that uh, as part of our assessment process. So we can't see a smaller sales for you to go and reach higher tier. Uh, we were looking into that uh, as part of the assessment. So just a warning there and guidelines to outline that requirement as well. We've got a couple of questions about plan to market and if there's any particular lengths or word limits. Um, so probably just good to highlight that there is exemplar ten plan to markets on the website that you can have a look to get a bit of an idea about the type and length of information. And we've got some questions about moving around tiers. So, for example, if, is it possible to move from a Tier 3 grant back to a Tier 2 grant in the new round? So, yes, it is possible. We don't expect a particular order. Um, you might establish, you know, a new market utilising the Tier 3 grant and then utilise Tier 2 to, you know, consolidate your activities in that market, for example. And just to note that we won't be moving you. You need to be very clear which the is uh, best suited for your exporting journey when you start applying, because if you apply in the wrong tier, we won't be doing and saying, coming back and please, maybe this tier is better suited for you. We wouldn't have time for that, and we actually wouldn't be fair on other applicants either. So please consider your exporting journey and which tier applies to you. And I think this brings us to the end of our questions today and the end of this webinar. Just to recap on this slide, you see uh, where you can contact us for more questions. Information is in the guidelines on our website and you can call us anytime at EMDG Help Desk. We'll endeavour to answer your questions as you are preparing your applications. If you would like to attend uh, more webinars, there's uh, more, two more webinars coming to, uh, up tomorrow for T2 and T3, so you can, you're welcome to attend them as well. So please use this time to prepare applications, look at exemplars, look at uh, how to apply videos on our website, and we wish you all the best uh, in preparations uh, for applying in November, uh, and all the best. <laughs>